Sponsored by Pure Bond Formaldehyde Free Hardwood Plywood. Professional grade, domestically made, and with the enduring beauty your work deserves. Available exclusively at The Home Depot and at homedepot.com. What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Magazine video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build these welded steel legs. This is a two-part build. In part two, I will show you how to build the walnut veneer plywood top that will be going with these legs. So definitely stay tuned for that, which will be going up a week from today. But this is my first welding project. Really excited with the way it turned out. So hopefully you enjoy the video. The first step in building the legs was cutting the metal pieces down to size. I used quarter inch thick, two inch by two inch square tubing that I found in my local scrap yard for the legs. This was probably complete overkill for the desktop made of plywood, but that's what I could find and I think it looks really cool. The finished legs actually weigh about 40 pounds each. The dimensions of the leg pieces were roughly 27 inches for the long pieces with the five degree angle cut on both ends in parallel. The center connecting pieces were roughly 12 inches long with the angles cut in opposing directions. And so I cut these five degree angles on all the pieces to give the finished legs a slight splay. Next, I cleaned up the areas where I'd be welding the legs together. I used a grinding wheel to remove any rust and mill scale, although this probably wasn't totally necessary since I was using flux core MIG for this project, and it generally does a fine job with metal that isn't perfectly clean. My welder of choice for this build was the Lincoln Electric Power MIG 210 MP, which was really simple to set up for a welding noob like myself. I used 0.035 flux core welding wire, and I'll have a link to the exact wire I used in the build article. I started the welds by making a few quick tack welds to hold the pieces together, removing the slag created by the flux core along the way. After tacking the pieces together, I ran beads on each side of the joints. On the second set of legs, I decided not to run a bead on the bottom of the legs as the three beads alone are incredibly strong, way stronger than I really need for this desk, and running the beads on the bottom meant that I had to grind them flush in order for the legs to sit nicely on the ground. Also on the first set of legs, I had a little trouble with my welds burning through and couldn't really figure it out. Well, what I didn't realize was the center connecting piece was actually 10 gauge steel, about an eighth of an inch thick rather than the quarter inch thickness of the long pieces. I somehow didn't realize that when picking through my pieces of scrap when making the cuts. They had the same outer diameter, so I guess I can see how I got confused. So I turned the ambridge down and finished up the first leg, and then recut the center support piece using quarter inch steel for the second leg. After finishing up my welds, I ground them down flush with the surface of the tubing using a grinding wheel on my angle grinder. You might notice that I'm not wearing gloves in a few of my grinding shots, so I've heard a lot of conflicting advice about gloves and spinning tools like the angle grinder. Some argue that the gloves can get caught in the tools, which also gets your fingers caught up in the tool, which can get pretty ugly. Others argue that you should always wear gloves when using an angle grinder as it can protect you in case the tool kicks back. The choice is yours, I just think in this case it was maybe safer to not wear gloves, but I don't really know. Next, I needed to cut off a few pieces from a large piece of quarter inch thick diamond plate steel that I also found at the scrapyard. These pieces would make up the mounting plates that the legs attach to. These mounting plates are used to attach the legs to the plywood desktop. I cut off two pieces roughly four inches wide by 24 inches long from the 24 inch by 24 inch piece of steel. I used a plasma cutter for this, but you could just as easily use a cutoff wheel on an angle grinder if you don't have a plasma cutter. This was actually only my second time ever using a plasma cutter, so I'm not even sure if my technique was quite right, but it worked out. The plasma cutter really has to be one of the coolest metal working tools in my opinion. So much flexibility. Off camera, I also removed about two inches from the overall length of each mounting plate, bringing them down to roughly 22 inches long. After cutting off the pieces, I ground down the dross that was left from the plasma cutting using the same grinding wheel as before. After cutting the mounting plates, I attached the legs to the plates. First, I centered the legs on the mounting plate and then held them in place using a few magnetic squares. Then I tacked them in place, cleaned off the slag, and then ran beads on each side of the legs. The legs were really starting to take shape at this point and I was really happy with the result considering this project was actually the first time I'd ever welded two pieces of metal together. In the welding class I took we would always just practice running beads but never actually attached anything so it was pretty exciting at this point. Next I cleaned up the welds with the grinding wheel then switched to a flap disc to really smooth out all the welds on the legs and get the surface prepped for finishing. There was still a bit of surface rust on the legs, so I hit them with 80 grit sandpaper using my random orbital sander, and this actually worked surprisingly well and really cleaned up the surface of the legs. 
After sanding, I wiped down the legs with denatured alcohol to remove any surface contaminants that would affect the paint, and then it was time for paint. I primed the legs with a gray automotive primer from Rust-Oleum and then painted them this kind of bright orange color, which I think will go really well with the walnut veneered plywood that I'm using for the desktop. The last step was to drill the holes for the screws to mount the legs to the desktop. I probably could have done this prior to paint, but I didn't want the screw holes getting gunked up with paint. I used a 3 16th inch drill bit in my drill press and kept the bit cool with WD-40. This probably wasn't the ideal choice, but it worked fine and kept the bit cool enough. Last, I countersunk the holes using a countersink bit. The screws I'm using are a number 10 3 quarter inch screws, which should hopefully provide enough holding power. I drilled about a dozen holes per leg, and I think it should work out fine. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the build. I had a lot of fun with it. Again, as I said, this is my first welding project, and it will definitely not be my last. So. Stay tuned for more welding and metalworking content. Again, next week I will be publishing part two of this build where I'll build the walnut veneer plywood top that goes along with these legs and I'll be finishing up the desk in that video as well. If you guys enjoy what I'm doing, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got new project videos every Tuesday and new weekly maker roundup videos every Thursday. Also, if you could like and comment on this video, that would be awesome, it really helps us out. And last, if you wanna get some extra goodies, some behind the scenes stuff, head over to our Patreon page patreon.com slash crafted magazine where you can support us further and get a behind the scenes look at some of our content thanks again guys and until next time happy building